little bit about your relationship with Jump Cloud. Thanks for your time. Um, before we get going, maybe a, typically a great starting point is to hear a little bit about you, your role, and your MSP. If you could kick off with that. Absolutely. So my name is, as you mentioned, Benjamin Morales. I'm CEO here at Cirrus Partners based out of uh, Madison, Wisconsin. We've uh, been around since 2005. It was started by uh, Dennis Nolan as MacWorks. We originally focused uh, on the Apple ecosystem for creative professionals. Uh, back in about 2016, I joined on the team as a level one tech um, and started expanding our, our technical systems so that we now you know, support all Unix systems and we'll even deal with Windows when we have to. Okay, that's interesting. So you kind of came at this from a Mac perspective. So a lot of MSPs steer clear of Mac, but you kind of sort of zoned in on that from the beginning. Yeah, well, the majority of the fleets that we manage are Mac OS devices. Okay, and I guess that's, yeah, I guess that's given you a bit of a head start because more and more Macs are getting into all kinds of different workplaces now, which is which is good. So turning to Jump Cloud, how did you sort of initially hear about us? Yeah, uh, Jump Cloud was a product that was floating around in the Mac admin community um, as an alternative to the dying Mac OS server. Um, people were kind of seeing the writing on the wall with that that product going away that probably should never have existed to begin with. Um, and it was compelling because, you know, it's cloud focused and decentralized. So uh, and and the product gave more attention to Mac OS as a platform than many others in the cloud directory space. Okay, and so what was your first interaction with Jump Cloud? Was it sort of a web, just a website introduction, or how did you sort of start to interact with us? Um, you know, we I think we started open with like a trial and just played around with the product a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was mostly word of mouth that we heard about you, and then you know just trying it out. I think we tried it in the really early days and declined, and then came back a few years later and. I uh, said, so, yeah, hey, it's gotten pretty good. <laughs> so we'll we'll go ahead and, you know, use it. Yeah, we're just continually evolving, as I'm sure you know now, now once you're in the in the partner program. Um, kind of your usage, did it evolve over time? As in, did you kind of work with Jump Cloud on internally or a particular client, or did you kind of spread it across all of your clients early on? So early on it was it was mostly kind of a skunk works thing where we were testing out and seeing would it would it be applicable you know we liked that it handled file vault well on the mac os side the, the key escrow systems were there and it didn't break crypto passphrases um and didn't break the bootstrapping process for mac os a lot of the directory um systems did do that unfortunately they they broke some things so it was nice to see that you know it was being treated as first class citizen um, we rolled it out internally first and, and decided, you know, this is something that we can live with because we don't want to ask our customers to live with something that we don't deal with ourselves. Um, in general, it, it brought a lot of value right off the bat. Um, at that time, we were really just focused on directory services and the device agent um, for uh, managing the local user account on, on that device, but really nothing beyond that. Uh, over time, um, Jump Cloud has expanded its offerings. We were initially very hesitant when we saw that move because of so many other uh, providers that we've seen expand their offering to try to, you know, hit a marketing spreadsheet. Um, and it usually ends up being very shallow in terms of feature set, and then things die on the vine. Um, we've been impressed that that has not been the case with Jump Cloud. Uh, as Jump Cloud has expanded, yes, they'll put out their kind of MVP initially. But there's iteration on top of those things, and they continue to improve uh, the features that they've they've already marketed, which is ex extremely positive for us and inspired a lot of confidence to go ahead and and adopt some of the additional feature sets that Gem Cloud was providing. Um, and yeah, I've just been very impressed that that has happened the way that it has, contrary to what we see with so many other vendors. Um, so at this point now, we moved from it purely being, you know, directory service, a local user account tool and SAML to uh, more of the device insights, device management portion. We're using the Mac OS MDM. Uh, we're excited for the Windows MDM portion that's, that's you know, on its way here. And, uh, you know, we, we're integrating more and more. I, th I think we basically use the entire feature set of Jump Cloud at this point. And it's actually allowed us to... Um, spin down some other services that we were paying for as well. 
Okay, yeah, that's great to hear because one of the the, fo the kind of focuses we have as an organisation is to reduce, to help MSPs and end users sort of reduce this tech sprawl and kind of reduce the number of tools that are there and hopefully reduce some costs along the way. So it's good to hear you're experiencing that. Yeah, so so interestingly, um, and this is something kind of Raj and I have back and forth on a little bit about this, uh, that's not really our mindset. So coming from the Unix background, we really want... Uh, simple tools that do one thing really well and integrate well with others. So the API for Jump Cloud was really important for us initially because that was the mechanism that allowed us to integrate Jump Cloud with all of our other tools. Um, so, you know, a lot of the times when these vendors come out with these vast array of, of features, they're all just minimally acceptable. Um, so the fact for us that we actually went on and, and adopted them uh, is, is significant because we're happy to continue to pay other vendors if they provide a better product. <laughs> if they're doing their portion better than Jump Cloud could do it, we'll pay them to do that and integrate. We're not, uh, you know, a, a, we're not even trying to be a cost leader in our space. We're di differentiated player. So we don't mind charging more to get the best tools in place. So the fact that Jump Cloud has replaced a lot of these tools for us just speaks to the fact that the, the quality of the tool has become pretty polished. Yeah, no, that's amazing to hear. So uh, talking to, with your clients, I mean, what are the main pain points that Jump Cloud, Jump Cloud has helped you overcome with those clients? So Jump Cloud um, is a like a reliable solution for decentralized identity and access management for our humans. Um, so it's it's easy enough for them to use that they actually want to use it. Uh, you know, the counterpoint is, you know, rolling out like a password manager, right? People understand, okay, password managers are important. I need to use one. But most users just struggle with the concept in general, and it's just a, a large barrier for them to get over. For Jump Cloud, there was immediate benefit when we integrated, you know, things like Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 and other SAML uh, services into it to get rid of that password layer and to have that single dashboard for them, they immediately understood, oh, okay, we're improving security. And this is a lot easier than having to deal with the alternative, which is all these passwords floating around in a password manager or worse. Yeah, no, it's great that uh, you bring your clients along with you. So that's, uh, that's really important. And again, good to hear. So changing to uh, the next topic um, around other MSPs or MSPs just starting out with Jump Cloud. Obviously you've been with us a while. So if you could pass on any advice to a new MSP that's just beginning, what kind of tip would you get, offer them to make them be successful with Jump Cloud? Yeah, I mean, spin up a test tendency for sure. And then really map out what you want your customer experience to be, both in, in onboarding, um, but also just in day-to-day -day use of the platform. And then test, 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 spin up VMs, use test hardware, test all the workflows. Um, if you're in the Mac OS space, you know, go through the automatic device enrollment process, really understand what you're seeing and what the gaps are. Close that up um, before you push out to production and before you push out to your customers. Um, I'd also say Jump Cloud provides a reasonable amount of documentation um, and even some example language that you could use to say, hey, this is what we're rolling out. Um, but in addition to that, what we have found it to be very helpful is to create videos for our customers that show things um, that might not translate well over uh, writing or, or even screenshots. So we have, for example, like a video of the user onboarding process where you know it's receiving the email, setting up the account, enrolling a phone and doing your first, you know, jump cloud protect push MFA cycle. Um, it's one long video, you know, that we've broken off into chunks and we can send, you know, links out highlighting different sections um, in our, in our Vimeo account. Uh, that's been helpful for our customers because as much as I don't like to say it, our culture has stopped being reading oriented and they really need pictures and videos to be able to understand what to do. Yeah, that's um, that's very true. We're seeing that as well with sort of video content is becoming much more uh, easily consumed. And when it comes to your your sort of clients with Jump Cloud, are you it, do you kind of bundle that within the service offering, or is it a separate line item that you that you're uh, charging for? Yes, so um, it's included in our core uh, offering for our mid tier product. So Cirrus Pro, when you get a Cirrus Pro license. Your Jump Cloud identity is included in that. There are times where customers will need a vendor or um, like a service account that are also included. That for that we 
we have a serious identity, which we're very transparent with our customers. This just means Jump Cloud license. So all we do for pricing on that is we point them to the Jump Cloud's website and say, hey, whatever the, li the license cost is on there is what we'll charge you um, for those licenses that go above um, the, you know, your core user counts. Because we, we charge by, by user per month. Yeah. And the sort of clients that you work with, I know they say you're sort of quite a specialist on the Mac side and do sort of a lot of development work as well. But do you kind of generally work with clients with IT expertise in-house or, or without? Um, so we've got a mixture of that. I would say, you know, these days it's not the Mac OS side that differentiates us, at least not in the, maybe it does still in like the Madison market, but when we start talking nationally, um, we're the MSP that takes on more complex environments where they have more regulatory needs. Um, they have, a, you know, above average technical and compliance needs, I, I would say, uh, and where customers are willing to take a more risk-based approach to IT governance. Um, so we provide a, a lot of the, the leadership um, in that. That does include, you know, we've got customers that have uh, full sys engineering teams that develop product um, within their, their market and have their own infrastructure that, you know, have clear lines of delineation between what we touch and what they touch. Uh, we've got customers that have hired a single IT manager that, you know, kind of uh, bridges the gap between vendors like us and, and their core leadership. Um, and then we've got, a, you know, a number of customers where there's no IT presence um, whatsoever. And, and we're interacting directly with senior leadership to kind of give that, um, a, you know, the, the leadership value in terms of evaluating risk, looking through financials, determining what is the right strategy for, for IT implementation. So we're all over the board <laughs> uh, in terms of the types of customers that we support. Yeah, and I think that's pretty common. I think a lot of MSPs um, deal with kind of the co-managed and the sort of single managed as you described. So I think that's that, that's interesting that I'm hearing that all, all around the world. I think that's sort of fairly common. Cool. So uh, final question, and this doesn't necessarily have to be about Jump Cloud, just using your experience of sort of setting up a, a very successful MSP, that um, what would you offer as one piece of advice to a new MSP starting out to try and sort of be successful? Because there are a lot of them and they need to stand out in the market. So is there anything you could help them get, get going? Sure. I mean, the, the first thing is to just actually understand the competitive forces in your market. Um, so if, if you haven't read Porter's Five Forces, you know, it's a short uh, Harvard Business Review article that you can read to get kind of the, the short version of that. Um, understand what those forces are for you. Um, and then pick a generic strategy. You know, are you going to be a cost leader? Are you going to be a differentiated player? Are you focusing on a specific vertical um, where you're going to be able to provide expertise? Uh, and then stick with that strategy. Don't, especially in the early days, don't be tempted to straddle and try to be all things to all people when you're really strapped for resources internally. You've got to find that niche and it's got to be a niche that people are willing to pay money for. Um, and just, yeah, just focus on those differentiators, whatever they might be for you. And then probably the most important thing for any business is get a CPA. <laughs> get a good CPA that you can trust. Yeah, no, that's uh, fantastic advice. And um, I'm sure it'll be useful for a lot of people watching. So really appreciate that. And with that, Benjamin, we're at time. Um, thanks so much for uh, taking part today. I've really enjoyed chatting. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks again. And all the best for the future. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thanks for the conversation.